Hey everyone, Mark back with video 19. I have officially lost it. I will explain that here in just a second. Um, and I also wanted to share uh, what I picked up for the personal collection. And it is maybe not as big as I originally thought, but it's pretty cool. And it is of my main uh, collection or main favorite player collection that I've added to. So um, I'll share that also. So I refer to uh, myself as losing it because um, I had forgotten that I had, in my last video, that I had uh, one more card incoming before I was hoping to get the final card to finish my 1968 top set. And uh, today in the mail, I ended up receiving another card that I knew I had purchased for the set, but I forgot to share that in the last video. So um, I am still down to one card, uh, but this card, number 487 Lee May, came today, and he is a high number, and he is... Um, he was very difficult to track down in anything centered left to right that was any better than what you see. I have yet to see a graded example or a raw example of anything better than what I have in front of me. And I got it for a good price. I paid 10 bucks. It was more than I expected to pay. Um, but once I started doing the research and once I started realizing that this is not a card that I'm going to probably ever find that is affordable in a centering left to right that is 60-40. I'm almost positive I'll never see one that is 50-50. And I would imagine that if there is one out there, it will probably get graded and will go for a large amount. Um, this is, in my opinion, obviously um, a side card on the sheet when it was cut and... As we all know, back in the 60s, that uh, centering was an issue. So this card was the second to the last card that I needed. And I, it just came today. And the last card in the set that I needed, I was fortunate enough to pick that up. And it is in route as we speak. And hopefully Tuesday, I will have that to share with you. But... I can say with 100% certainty that I now have only one card left to put in the binder after Lee May, and hopefully that card is here on Tuesday. So um, I'm sure that other collectors have had moments like that where they know that they've got so many cards left, and you know it's just one of those things. But uh, Lee May goes into the set tonight. The PC purchase um, is. I had a chance to pick up this a few years ago, uh, obviously probably a different example, but um, I was able to find another pair of these, there's a little bit of a hint, and um, I'll share with you uh, what they are here in a second, um, but I will tell you that um, I catch a lot of grief from friends because my uh, number one uh, PC is of a guy by the name of Chuck Knobloch. He is my all-time favorite player. He was a second baseman for the Twins and Yankees and later on with played outfield for the Royals. Um, he is obviously, um, you know, a, a former twin and, and, and that was my first connection with him. Um, he is my main PC um, as far as players go. And it is unfortunate that um, he has made some choices uh, post-career, well, actually during career also with the steroids, um, as far as you know what has been reported. But uh, uh, he has made some other poor choices and has suffered some consequences for that. And um, I was at Twins Fest which is a, a gathering in uh, late January in Minneapolis. And 
Um, I remember them announcing that Chuck Knobloch was elected to the Twins Hall of Fame, and I was super excited. And um, about a month later, I believe, is when he got himself in a little bit of trouble, and the Twins said, sorry, but uh, we just can't allow you in to the Hall of Fame um, as a result. So, um, unfortunately, he is not in there at the moment, and I highly doubt he'll ever get in. However, <clears throat> one of the things that I've been looking for um, over the years, I passed up a chance at these a few years ago, and uh, another pair came about, and I was absolutely thrilled to find a pair of game-used um, Knobloch batting gloves. And um, Franklin was, was a big uh, maker of batting gloves back in the 90s. And uh, um, they show obvious signs of, of wear and such. Um, the person I bought them from um, had very great, very high feedback. And also I communicated with him uh, regarding these. And, you know, he said, he told me exactly where he got them, when he got them. And I also know that um, it's very hard to, um, you know, fake these because of um, he did have uh, knob written or not written, but um, put on his batting gloves. So um, kind of a cool um, add to the collection. Um, I do have some other things of his that I will share um, in other videos, but um, um, these came today. This is what I was referring to back in the uh, video 18. Um, and i um, very excited to add these to the collection. I have heard that he is going to be doing a signing in Minneapolis in October. And um, if it works out and he's able to make it, um, I may make a trip down there and uh, get some items signed and get a chance to meet uh, my favorite player. So anyway, um, again, uh, one card left, and hopefully that's in route for the 68 set. And and what I think are a cool pair of game news batting gloves from my favorite twin of all time, Chuck Knobloch. Until next time, take her easy. Thanks for watching.